your big reveal? I am. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, this oh is where, this this is really where you guys, you know, get get to participate. Um, you know, obviously I'll guide you through this, but um, this is this is about you guys understanding how to put all these pieces together. So what I'm what I'm sitting here fumbling around with is is my my sloppy notes uh, that I have and with the uh, range of motion and then the postural assessment. So as we finished up the other day, and and I don't know, um, Lucia, if you got to see the recording from the other day, but in any event, as far as the range of motion goes, we were. Let me just look at this real quick. Thirty-five uh external okay the only ones that did not meet the 90 percent were internal and external rotation so i'm going to let you guys stay unmuted but just try and you know keep keep the noise down as much as possible just so we don't have a uh, a bunch of whatever you know background noise uh but i want you guys to be able to talk freely so internal and external mm -hmm. rotation we are going to do some range of motion exercises before we do anything that is going to involve strength training. Um, now, going back to your workout that you gave us, um, Tracy, I don't, I don't see anything external internal rotation. So it, it, you know, nothing you were doing was negatively impacting that. But we want to add some range of motion exercises. So I pointed this out the other day. This is page 71 in module three. These are just a couple examples. Um, this is the one that you know I, I tend to choose, and you can use a broomstick or a dowel uh, or or even a towel. And you know, in, in this particular case, you've got one arm externally rotated, one arm internally rotated, and, and they assist each other. So you're doing your own active isolated stretching. Now, the more we get our clients to, and ourselves, <laughs> to stretch and work through range of motion, the quicker we see results. Um, Tracy, you're, you're, the, the biggest deficit was on your left arm for external rotation. Um, and, it, you know, who, who knows after injury and everything, scar tissue adhesions, how long it's going to take to, to correct it or how much you're going to correct it, but you just keep working on it until it improves. And so technically uh, you're at, you're at 50 degrees when you get to 63 is when you could actually, you know, do external rotation with dumbbells or bands or, or add any kind of load. Now, even something like, let's see if I can get all of me in here, a cactus pose for yoga, you have to go into external rotation to do that. Um, and holding that pose in an isometric contraction is going to have that same impact as far as strengthening the muscles in a certain position before we regain, you know, the full range of motion. So for right now, I'm just kind of putting at the top of top of my my page here, internal and external rotation, page 71. And you don't have to do those particular stretches or range of motion exercises. You can think about if you're an aquatics instructor, what can you do in the swimming pool? If you're a Pilates instructor, what could you do on your reformer or your Cadillac or, you know, with whatever other apparatus that you have? So these are just ideas in module three. All right. But do you guys understand the 90% or better? So in, in the case of external rotation, our norm is 70 to 90. You've got to have 90% of that lower end, which is 63 degrees. And Tracy only had 50. So we say, all right, before we add a load, we're going to suggest these range of motion exercises, which Tracy, you could leave a dowel or a broomstick or something sitting around in your kitchen. So every time you go in there, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this, this exercise. And the more you do it, the, the quicker, hopefully you'll see results. Um, like anything else, doing a warm up first is going to be better. So even though I'm I'm talking about this first, that doesn't mean that's like the first thing that we do. We always want to start off with a warm up. Now Tracy has been doing 15 to 20 minutes of walking on a treadmill, rebounding 30 minutes a day. Great, no need to change those things. However, do keep in mind um, because one of the things you had mentioned is wanting to lose weight that your body gets used to whatever it is you're doing. So however you can mix it up. 
Um, I don't know what you're doing on the rebounder. You know, if you're just jumping around, uh, I, I guess you can answer that for me. I just do a small, like I don't even jump off the mat. I'm just doing this like health bounce thing where moving my feet. Okay. So I'm not like jumping or, and sometimes I'll add arms to it, you know, but I don't do the jumping off okay. of it like some people do. I am, I invite you to check out some videos I have on my um, YouTube channel, oh. Cancer. Okay. You'll have to scroll a bit, but at the beginning of COVID, I created a couple um, rebounding videos. And what I did is I actually took aerobic, you know, like go back to the eighties aerobics, you know, right. and, you know, and this and this and, you know, whatever, and, and right. different leg moves and different patterns. So not only... Um, it's fun, you know, I put on good music and, and, uh, it, it's really fun. It's great for your brain. So what I would do, for example, I would start off with, you know, here, let me, let, let me just show you as best I can here. So I might, I might start off with just, you know, doing this, right. And I'll do that 10 times. Then I'll do this 10 times. Then I'll go back to this 10 times. Then I'll do this 10 times. Then I'll do this 10 times. Then I go back to this. The, you see what I'm saying? So you keep right, it up, it up. which is really wonderful. And, and you guys uh, should consider that with uh, probably most of your, of your clients, especially those, you know, aging, menopausal, going, having gone through chemo, uh, anything that's affected the memory doing these patterns is, is a really important component. So while I'm speaking specifically about rebounding, you could do that with anything. I mean, you can just do, do floor work, but Tracy check that out. Cause that'll give you some variety. Um, and as for the walking, you might try um, some different things like intervals, um, mess around with your incline, mess around with your speed. Uh, if you have, arm, you know, arms that you can hang on to, whatever you call them, rails, try walking backwards on an incline. So you, <laughs> you, you know, you do it very slowly, but you do the inc incline and only do it if you can hold on. If you don't have something to hold on to, don't do it. But you're using different muscle groups. We've been walking since we were a year old or something like that, right? So, and believe me, I walk, I walk a lot. Uh, that That's probably the mainstay of my, my exercise. However, um, your, your body does get used to it. So mix, mix it up as much as you can. And then what I'm getting at is you can do that before your workout as your warm up, or at the very least take five minutes to do something to warm your body up before you get going in your exercise program. So I'm just going to put five minutes or more warm up. Um, you are already meeting the minimum recommended by American Cancer Society and ACSM um, for 75 minutes of high intensity or 150 minutes low to moderate intensity cardiovascular exercise. So that's not the concern. It's not a concern of getting it into your, your lifestyle. It's there. Now it's just a matter of, kind of spicing it up a little bit and, and even adding other things, you know, if you, you have other opportunities to do uh, different types of cardiovascular exercise, uh, I spent $150 and got this pretty crappy recumbent bicycle on Amazon. Uh, it's by Marcy or something, but it works. I have it in my, my living room here. Uh, you know, just wanted something that I could watch TV and ride the bike for an hour or half hour, whatever I feel like doing. And it's great. Is it perfect? Is it the best? No, but it gets the job done. So maybe you add some, something else to your repertoire if you're interested. And also the other part about cross training uh, isn't just, you know, losing weight, burning calories, but it's, um, I just had, see, I just had my brain, brain blip. <laughs> I, I think things you, up so you're, you're, uh... I'm doing your muscles differently. Yes, you, and so, avoiding avoiding overuse injuries was was what I was getting at. So so not I mean you got mental stimulation, you got physical stimulation, you got cal caloric expenditure, but also and and this is something I'm running into because I'ause I'm doing like two th 20,000 steps a day 
for various reasons, not necessarily intentionally. And I've got Achilles tendonitis. I've got plantar fasciitis. Last night, my ankle swelled up for no, no apparent reason. So we, we do have to consider how much we're doing on a particular part of our body and do something differently to avoid overuse injuries. So just food for thought. What about UFOs, shoes, O-O-F-O-S? Never heard of those. I just bought Kuru, K-U-R-U, and I put them on. They're specifically for like plantar fasciitis. Oh, oh yeah, I do have a pair of those at home. I do. They have sneakers now too. Okay. Well, these, uh, it's amazing. I put on these Kuru's, however the heck you pronounce them, went for a three mile walk or whatever the other day. Completely different feel. I've been wearing ons and uh, it was amazing, like how much pressure it took off of those uh, specific areas. And then I bought a pair, Dansco now has these, they're kind of cute sneaker type things, but they don't, I don't know how to, you know, you could wear them like for normal dress or for, for athletics um, and they're suede and there's so much support, you know, dance co they make a lot of clogs and that type of things. And they're very uh, they, they're used a lot by like hairdressers and people who are on their feet a lot. They're remarkable. I got them yesterday. So I'm trying different, different shoes um, just to, you know, relieve some of the pressure and uh, food for thought The I, I really like both of those. All right. Now we've got our warm up. Looking at your, at Tracy's medical history, we know that she had lymph node removal and radiation. So, so basically I'm, I'm going to go through this list now. This is just what I you probably can't read my scribble scrabble, but when we, when we were first talking, this was all the information she gave me. Now I have all different colored pens here, which come in really handy when doing this because uh, you know, you're doing a, doing a lot of crossing out and notating. So I'm going to circle radiation. I'm going to circle lymph node removal. And then um, I didn't write it on here, but I'm also going to put weight gain and circle that. So these three things, weight gain, lymph node removal, radiation, what am I concerned with? What, what, so, what, what, what are we, what are you at risk for based on those three things? It's, it's so obvious that you're probably overlooking. Exactly. Okay. So we have what I'm going to call three red flags for lymphedema. So as, as we go through the, this checklist, if you will, you're trying to determine what is most important right now. Okay. I mean, yeah, you're at high risk for osteoporosis, but is that going to happen overnight? No. What is more imminent is your risk for lymphedema and you've got a, a fairly high risk. Now you only had three lymph nodes removed. So that's kind of low on the scale, but then let's say, for example, with, with three lymph nodes removed, you have roughly a 7% risk of lymphedema that doubles with radiation. So now you have a 15% chance of lymphedema. And then the extra body fat increases the risk because it retains fluid. So, you know, it doesn't really matter what the percentage is. I mean, yes, if, if you had a 90% chance, I'd say, wow, you really better aggressively be, you know, dealing with this. But nonetheless, we're going, all right, this is a significant risk factor. So this, this is something that she needs to start doing now. Um, I, I, you know, you could do lymphatic drainage exercises any time of day. You can do it 20 times a day. It doesn't matter. Uh, but definitely I want you to start doing that preferably after you do your warm up, because this too serves as, as part of your warm up. But for your lymphatic system, we're opening up the lymphatic pathways, allowing that lymphatic fluid to flow more freely. And that, of course, is the goal. So uh, in your particular case, we're going to do the upper extremity lymphatic drainage exercises. Um, if you or anybody else, if, if you were going through that series of lymphatic drainage exercises and you're like, oh, I, I can't raise my arm up here, I, I can't do this particular one, then you don't do that particular one. You know, you do as many of them as you can in the sequence that it is 
uh, delivered. So here, let me get my little, hold on. I think this one is in my July. Um, and remember, you guys can order those lymphatic drainage cards also uh, for, for your own personal use uh, and or for, uh, hold on, I thought I had a picture of it in here, but it might have just been on my PowerPoint. Um, the, lymphat the lymphatic drainage rack cards are awesome because most doctors will let you leave them in their office and it's a great calling card. You can find them here. I'll put it in the chat box. It's exercise brochure dot com and uh, you can order business cards you can order um brochures and jansen who designed these she's also a cancer exercise specialist she did a wonderful job on these it's already done for you she can change the colors put your logo uh, even change out the pictures like lucia if if you wanted them she would do the pdf for you so you could get them printed in colombia uh because it'd be too expensive to ship them to you so you can just reach out to her. But I, uh, these are the lymphatic. The, the question I have, Andrea, is uh, about the translation. I know that the people oh. can look at the images, but should I, I, I maybe I should oh. translate it, no? In Spanish? I already have it translated. Scroll through the Facebook group. Somebody, um, or, or send me an email later. Um, I can't remember the gal's name. I think it was Maria translated it into Spanish and see, she created one and shared it. Uh, it's in the Facebook cancer exercise specialists a couple weeks ago. If you scroll down, you'll see it. But if not, uh, just email me. I'll send you or anybody else. I'll send you the PDF for that. Okay. Thank but the, you so much. Yeah, of course. These are the exercises that are, are all listed on that, the rat card. And, you know, not everyone is going to be able to get down on the floor. Uh, to do to do crunches or this is pelvic tilts and then this is crunches. Now, if you have somebody with forward head, so Tracy, we don't want you doing this. Okay, this is what I want you doing, where you're bearing down. You're still doing a crunch for all intents and purposes. Uh, either either lying down. Now, if somebody has extreme forward head, you're going to probably want a little pillow or a towel rolled up under their head here. Um, and, and you definitely don't want them pulling on their head. So this is a great one. And this is great for, for seniors or anybody who has a difficult time getting up and down. Um, so if they can't do pelvic tilts, they can't do pelvic tilts. You just don't, don't do it. But then you go in this particular sequence. So when, when we're doing these neck stretches for anybody who has, you know, a tight neck musculature, they have an elevated shoulder then you can spend a little extra time doing these, you know, spend 20 to 30 seconds on, on each stretch as opposed to just quickly going through it. Uh, then you've got shoulder shrugs up and down. You've got shoulder rolls, um, isometric shoulder blade contraction. Uh, keep Andrea, but those exercises for people who are with expanders? Um, so... That's a great question. Remember, we said no chest exercises for somebody with expanders. So being in this particular case, we would eliminate this because as we contract our back, we are stretching our chest, right? And then we would also eliminate this, which is contracting the chest isometrically. And now, how about the cactus pose? Uh, well, the cactus pose is not part of this. Um, you know, yes, you're stretching your chest there. So I would say that's probably not optimal. Here's the thing about the expanders. Not every doctor says this, okay? This is my medical advisory board that has said, you know, this this is what we feel very strongly about that you shouldn't do this. Um, but, but you're going to have probably more people that will tell you my doctor didn't say that versus those you know who say oh yeah my doctor told me not to do chest or back so if you have a client who comes to you and they're already doing it you might just mention to them be be aware you know if you're feeling a lot of pulling here it's probably not not a good exercise for you to be doing you know if you can do it with very little movement so for example if if i'm isometrically contracting my shoulder blades so right now I'm retracting my shoulder blades. I'm squeezing like I have a tennis ball and I feel very little through here. 
Whereas, you know, if I raise my arms up, I feel more because it's taking more effort for me to bring my arms up. So there are ways to modify things. And I think I think the best thing to do is communicate with your client and just say, look, if if you're really feeling a tugging sensation through here, it's probably an exercise you should avoid for right now. Because some people immediately the, after their surgery are are have their their expansors expansors already. Yeah. So it will take a long time to begin to begin working with themselves because uh, uh, if we wait until the implants are already settled, it will oh, take a long time. Months. They lose time in 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 exercising. Yeah. No. Exactly. So so. Like I said, it's it's kind of this gray area. I mean, definitely avoid things like this, right? Really aggressive movements. But but isometric small movements, I, I believe are fine as long, long as you know they're they're gonna feel it. Because remember, like unlike breast augmentation, where you still have breast tissue and you put an implant in, but you've got breast tissue all around the implant to hold it in place. There's nothing. They've removed the breast and just, you know, plopped a plopped an implant or an expander in there. There's nothing holding it in place other than what they are surgically using as far as mesh reinforcement. That has not healed yet. So while, you know, somebody just freshly got expanders or freshly, uh, meaning they just had their surgery, um, it's going to take weeks weeks for that to heal, if not months. So I usually use six weeks as a guideline before really, really beginning uh, more aggressive strength training. You know, at first I'm focusing on range of motion, isometrics, body weight exercises, definitely not adding load, not only because of the lymphedema risk, but, but because we want to allow for proper healing. So let's say, for example, your client has just had expanders placed. They have a port here, so there's there's an opening, and obviously they just had their mastectomy or whatever, because expanders are usually done uh, typically immediate, but but it you know it could be a year afterwards, and and they go back in and decide to have reconstruction. Um, so not not only do we have the issue of the fact that they have expanders, but we also have the fact that it's healing from a fresh surgery. So you could do all- and How about the people who have their catheter uh, recently installed? The port, you mean? Yeah, same same thing. So it's still a surgery. Now that is a small surgery. You know, there'll be a little, little incision there. So I would give that at least two weeks to heal. Um, but be very, very, very careful of anything in prone position or, or you're up against a machine, you know, anything that's going to cause discomfort, but, but generally speaking, it, there, there was a point where doctors wouldn't let, you know, wouldn't give people permission to exercise for six weeks. Now, most doctors after like two weeks are like, yeah, you, you, you can begin to exercise. But remember, even though the client has the medical clearance, even though they feel good, there's still internal healing going on that we can't see. So just tread lightly, go slowly. Okay. okay. Um, so Thank anyway, the, yeah, of course, these lymphatic drainage exercises are in module two. And uh, they begin on page 87 and go through page 92. So page 87 to 92. And then of course, if somebody's at risk for lower extremity lymphedema, following the upper extremity lymphatic drainage exercises, uh, we do the lower extremity. And the reason we do the upper ones first is because it opens up the thoracic duct, which is the main point of, of drainage for, for the majority of the body. Um, if somebody can't get on their back, they can't do the lower extremity lymph drainage exercises, just doing the deep breathing and the upper extremity lymph drainage exercises will probably suffice. But you know, when it's, when it's uh, not an issue, I definitely want them to do as much as they can. All right, so now we're probably, you know, 15 minutes into your workout. Now, Tracy doesn't have any reasons that she can't do a full hour other than time, you know, but we're not dealing with somebody who is going through chemo, who's very low energy, who, you know, we would only do a 20 to 30 minute workout for, in which case we have to think very deliberately about what we want to do in that 20 to 30 minutes. As I said, this would already have eaten up about 15 minutes, which means if we were only giving Tracy a 30-minute workout, it's like, okay, well, what's what's most important? What's next? 
Uh, is it balance? Is it is it uh, strength training? Is it cardiovascular? And and that's why you have to kind of set precedence for what's most important today. Um, fair to say, Tracy is uh, you know probably working out an hour a day anyway, right? At least some days. Yeah, yeah. about an hour, hour and a half. Okay, and then so, I break it up too. Like I'll do rebounding in the afternoon and watch the news or something. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the other thing. Remember, um, now, once again, you know, Tracy, you're not like just, you know, you just finished chemo yesterday or whatever, and, and you're not in that that low level. Uh, you know, you've been working out, you're pretty vibrant, seem to have a lot of energy. So er there's so many, so many different variables. And that's why I say we have to meet people where they're at. And then there might be a day, Tracy, that you're just like, oh, man, I have no energy. Uh, like with anybody else, you know, we're not going to push them until they're, you know, crawling out of the gym, so to speak. All right. right. Some movements better than none. Uh, oh, yeah. And that, that's what, that's actually what my point was going to be that it can be cumulative. So yes, optimally to, you know, maximize fat burning, you want to probably try and do a half hour or more of cardio at one time, but you know what, who cares when it's somebody who can barely do anything. I don't care if they're doing one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes throughout the day. We just want people moving. Now your goals are a little different, Tracy, because you can work harder. You do want to lose weight. Um, you know, you, you can, you can go a little more aggressively. So I would definitely, like I said, mix it up, change up the intensity, do intervals, um, and maybe even incorporate some other cardiovascular exercises. Um, the other thing with Tracy uh, that we, we mentioned at the very beginning, she has a vertical abdominal incision from a previous hysterectomy. Now, when we did do your postural assessment, um, I'm just looking here, hips level severe forward. No. It, it you did not seem to be affected in terms of like a you know a, a pelvic tilt or anything. You you weren't leaning forward, um, but I I would suggest possibly uh, you know lying over a foam not a foam roller a a, a, a ba uh, god an exercise ball or a bosu and see if you feel a stretch in your abdominal area. If you do, that's probably a good indication that there's some, some tightness. It could be scar tissue, it could be adhesions and, and just work on that because over time, I think that that will make uh, everything more efficient and, and not alter your posture into that forward position. Okay, next um, I'm going through the... Uh, I'm looking at the list of things. So, so the radiation, um, not only is it a risk factor for lymphedema, it's also a risk factor for, for heart and lung damage. So we know you need to do cardiovascular exercise to strengthen your heart and lungs. We've already covered that. You're good. You, you got, you got that down. So next we're going to move into, uh, your postural assessment. And we noticed that your right shoulder was appeared lower or your left shoulder appeared higher. Therefore, I want you to spend some extra time on those neck stretches during your lymphatic drainage exercises. So extra time, neck stretches. Um, nine out of 10 times, if not 9.5 out of 10 times, uh, in my experience, when I see, you know, like one shoulder elevated, it could be that, you know, that that's the hand you use most often. You hold your phone here like this. You carry your purse on the other, any number of things. Um, so usually within a couple of months, especially if you're doing the correct exercises and stretching, you should see that correct itself. And this is why I like to do a reassessment every eight to 12 weeks. So we can see if the exercise strategy that we've chosen is effective if, if it's working. And if not, we tweak it. We try something else. All right. So I, I'm just, like I said, I'm just kind of going through, checking things off. Uh, her hips were level. Uh, she does have a severe forward head. So now we're going to go to module three and we are going to go to, uh, hold on. All right, this is page 16. And this is your kind of muscle imbalance chart. 
Okay. What's that module three? That's in module three, page 16. And we're gonna go to forward head. So it tells us that the tight muscles are the sternocleidoid, mastoid, levators, scalene, suboccipitals, and upper trapezius. So if those muscles are tight, the last thing we want to do is shorten them anymore, right? We need to stretch them. But then the weak muscles are deep cervical flexors, lower trapezius, and rhomboids. So that means we need to strengthen those. Now you can Google it. You can think about what exercises you should be doing. Or you can go a few pages later, if we, starting on page 31, we've got some corrective exercises. So we go to minimizing forward head. Now, you can see we've already done these, these stretches. We've already done them in, uh, in the lymphatic drainage exercises. Mm -hmm. So now we can go to the strengthening. And for this particular one, I just have this one exercise listed. Uh, you can certainly think of others, but essentially all that we're doing there is retracting the head. So in this particular case, she's lying down, she's got a little you know, folded up towel or whatever underneath her head. And it's really important to not, not tuck the chin down and not tilt the head back. It's literally like just straight back. Now you can also just do that throughout the day, like you just did. Make sure you're not holding your breath. I've been doing it, boy, my back hurts a lot. You're probably doing, doing, doing too much. Um, I've had people who doing this will give them a migraine. Rem remember, even as simple as this is, when you have muscles that have been spastic, yeah. short, you know, for, for periods of time, you're not getting the appropriate blood flow to that area. And that alone can, can cause a lot of pain. So it's really important to start things slowly. Every single thing, whether it's preventing lymphedema, whether it's recovering from surgery, or, I mean, you, you have a significant forward head. So when you force that into alignment, Imagine what, what that's doing, because remember, as we contract this, all these posterior muscles are, are stretching and then they're, they're a little pissed off afterwards and they're like, ah, and, and they start spazzing out and that, you know, you get ischemia, which is the lack of blood flow to that area. And that can result in pain. So back off, take it a little bit slower. Okay. Um, but I'm going to put on this list head retractions. And this isn't necessarily like what we're writing down. It doesn't have to be in this particular order. I'm just going through my checklist. And then, you know, you, you can go through it and say, okay, I'm going to do these on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm going to do these on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, so on and so forth. Now, anything that does not involve weights or resistance, technically you can do every day, but listen to your body. Because if you're getting pain from something you're doing, you're either doing it wrong or you're doing too much of it. Okay. All right, so that is the forward head and you understand like how you can use this as a resource. So we give you suggested exercises or you, you go, all right, well, I'm a Pilates instructor. What do I have? Oh, I have, you know, a little ball. I could put that behind somebody's head standing against a wall and they're pushing back against the ball, or, you know, whatever, um, as far as yoga. I mean, this, this is pretty benign as far as an exercise goes, you know, you're just pushing your head back. Um, but but you can still think of other ways to do it. All right, next we have winged scapula. So now we go to our handy dandy chart here again, and we look at winged scapula and we see tight rhomboid and pec major. Now on the, the last one, we saw weak rhomboids. You can have both. So you can need to stretch and strengthen. Um, also, we have weak serratus anterior middle to lower trap and so that's the second time we see weak lower trap um serratus anterior is running between your pec and your lat not necessarily in your situation but oftentimes with an axillary lymph node dissection there is uh, damage to the long thoracic nerve which can result in a temporary ceasefire of the serratus muscle which because that is uh, stabilizing your scapula that results in that lack of stabilization. And you see that, you know, the inferior uh, end of the scapula kind of sticking out. If you look at a runway model, you know how their shoulder blades pop out. 
different different cause, but but that's essentially what we're looking at. So then I go, all right, let's look up exercises for correcting winged scapula. So I go a few more pages here, minimizing winged scapula. And so this is now page uh, 33 and 34, and I'm writing these down too, and I'll share this with you guys. And we, uh, you, you can choose a number of, of different stretches. Like this is my favorite stretch actually for rhomboids. I think this is a really good one. You know, people could do that sitting in a chair. They can do that on the floor. So those are your stretches. And then you have a variety of ways that you can strengthen. Now, does this mean that I am going to do this with everybody? Oh, God, no, right? I'm not going to take somebody who has balance issues or who's, you know, in danger of, of hurting themselves and, and, you know, put them on something like that. But this could be, this could be done on a chair. Uh, this could be just done on the floor. And this is the easiest exercise for somebody to do, which is just ceiling punches. So essentially you're lying on your back and you're just lifting your shoulders off of the table or the floor or the bench or whatever. Um, but once, once again, I want to remind you that with, with somebody who's at risk for lymphedema, even if it's really easy and they could hold 20 pounds in each hand, don't start with 20 pounds because it's not just a matter of strength. It's a matter of what their lymphatic system can handle. So if this is a new exercise for you, Tracy, then start with just body weight. You, you do that the first day, there's no swelling. Great. Now add one pound, then two, then three, then five, you know, so on and so forth. So uh, we're going to call these ceiling punches. And then if you do want to add uh, a little balance challenge, you can do it on a foam roller and engage your abdominal muscles and work on that. So that would be this guy right there. Okay. So is there a list of all the names of these things? No, there's, there's not a list of the names because everybody calls, you know, you could take a Pilates instructor is going to call it one thing and a okay. personal trainer is going to call it another. So I'm calling this ceiling punches. Um, I'm calling this head retractions, just, you know, common sense things that, that somebody can understand. And what, you know, what you can do, um, you're more than welcome. I don't know how you would do it, scan it, Photoshop it or whatever. Um, you know, you can, you can use these pictures and, and share them with your clients. Um, and I'm, I'm fine with making stick figures too. I long before these fancy computers and everything existed. I was notorious for making stick figures. Still works. Andrea, I have a question. Those, sure. the, I have, a, I have seen very many of the videos and zooms, uh, but I, I really haven't had time to go to the books. Really, okay. one question: uh, it, Are those figures in the book? In yeah. the handbook. Or, or those are different catalogs you have. No, no, this is this is module three. So this is in this is what uh, you're just module three, which is included in the handbook. Yes. Yeah, so when you go, some of you will have hard copies. I mean, you have the old one, the uh, old yes. book. So yours is not going to have this because this was added two years ago. So um, but you have the download in your teachable. So under each module, you'll see module one, module two handbook. And you can download it and see those, and then um, you know you can you can screenshot it or or print them off. One if, personal question: Do you really advise me to get the new handbook, or I mean, will you know, it, will it be enough with the book I have? I think you're fine. You don't need to spend the money. Um, you uh, just use you 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 can use the downloads for the the different things that you don't have, because uh, you know it's it's expensive to send it to you because you're out of the country. I know. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Okay. And maybe just print the pages of the exercises you need. And that's well, that's, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Uh, like on a Mac, you go command shift four and you can you can screenshot it. I don't know how you do it on like a regular computer, but um, I'm not like the most techie person at all. But there are different different ways that you can do it. And like I said, you know, you can. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. I'll do my best. This, this well, maybe can she, can she just order the two books with the, all the exercises in? Yeah, them? you could. You could just order module three. That's that's the one with all the exercises. But just to give you a silly example, here's my forward head. Right. If I want to explain to somebody to to retract their head, then I say, 
you know, all right, that's what I want you to do. Hmm. I mean, it's not rocket science, you know, keep uh, what, what a kiss, keep it simple, stupid, right? <laughs> there you Thank go. you. All right. Um, too many pieces of paper here. Okay, so we've covered forward head, winged scapula. Um, let me go back to this chart here and. Um, now, not everything is on here. So um, like foot pronation, foot supination. I try and tell people this, you know, not all of us are experts on anatomy and physiology and God knows it's like everything else. You know, if you don't use it, you lose it, but think common sense. So let me use my foot here. Hopefully it's not too dirty on the bottom. I've been walking around barefoot. <laughs> If I, if I pronate, okay, and I'm rolling inward, which is hard to tell from this angle, what's happening is my lateral ankle muscles are shortened. My medial muscles are lengthened, okay? So as that's happening, my knee is also being pulled medially and my hips are rotating medially. So what that means is if, if we have a, a medial knee rotation, so the patella is going in this way, we need to do abduction exercises. We need to push out to strengthen the hip external rotators and to strengthen the abductors of the legs. Now with the foot, what you could do, you can use bands, you know, to, to do plantar dorsiflexion or rotation type exercises. But, but what I'm getting at, it's like there it's, it's opposites, right? If I contract my bicep, my tricep stretches. If I contract my tricep, my bicep stretches. So even if you're not an expert at anatomy and physiology, you know, we can all use a review, think logically, you know, if, if somebody's knock need, I don't want them doing adduction. If somebody's bow-legged, I don't want them doing abduction because it's just going to make it worse. So think strategically about corrective exercises. All in all, uh, Tracy, you have you're you don't have a whole lot of muscle imbalances. You've done a very good job of, you know, choosing the exercises that that you're doing. Um, and we'll reflect. So for bow knees, you do abduction. No, if you're so bow thinking, knees. Now remember, sometimes it's a muscle imbalance. Sometimes it's anatomical, in which case you're not going to make a whole lot of difference. So let's say bow somebody's knees. standing like this, right? So I'm that's me. I'm pronating. Okay, I don't want to be doing adduction because that's going to make it worse. I want to be doing abduction. That's okay. right. Thank so, you. So you could put a band around your knees and then do squats, but you're you're pushing out while you're doing it so that when you're doing squats, you're not you're not doing this. Now at Perfect. the same time, if we have somebody who's more bow legged, we don't we don't want them doing abduction. In that particular case, I might put a ball or a foam roller or something between their legs so that they're squeezing inward while they're doing the squat. And, and the, the good thing, if, if you really think, think these things through, is you can maximize somebody's workout in, in less time, you know, by killing two birds with one stone, so to speak, uh, with, with strategic exercises. All right. So for all intents and purpose that, you know, really the corrective exercises are the head retractions and the ceiling punches and, and the neck stretches. Um, you didn't, you really didn't have a whole lot going on in the lower body where a lot of people will be all jacked up with their knees and their hips and, and everything like that. Yay. So when you were doing a squat now for the squat test, we're going to go to, um, so this is page 23 in module three. And this is what I was just talking about with, with the knock knees, with the bow legs. And we can see a lot of this during the dynamic movement of a squat test where we might not see it in a static test. And the other thing that I was trying to describe when, when we have somebody, um, hold on, I got to look at these pictures. So if you look at the red lines, 
verse, I don't know if you can see the, there you go. So the body should be lined up like the dotted green lines. This upper body and the shins should be parallel. And as you can see by the red lines that in this example, they're not. Um, you know, this, this one's better, but, but still not perfect. So when we see that, you know, forward lean, then we go to the next page. And this describes all of the possibilities during the squat test. So that is going to be page 25. And so uh, we, we saw you leaning to the left, which is not one of the things that are, are listed on here. Um, right arm side, more severe than left, slight collapse at the waist. Okay, so we are going to look at excessive forward lean. Now, yours wasn't really excessive, yours was slight, but let's take a look and see what it says. So overactive muscles are the soleus, gastrocnemia, so your calves, uh, hip flexors, tight hip flexors. Now, if we were in a, in a position where we could do a modified Thomas test, which is very difficult to do for most people in, you know, virtually, cause they don't have like a, a table to lie on, uh, but watch the video in, uh, module three and teachable on how to do a modified Thomas test, because then we could, we could actually see, do you indeed have tight hip flexors? You know, what, what is contributing to this most? Um, but most people do have tight hip flexors just from sitting a lot. So, so let's now start adding calf stretches. Uh, we know previously we need to do rhomboid stretches. We've already covered the next stretches. Uh, we're also going to do hip flexor stretches. And then um, rectus abdominis external oblique uh, are, are typically tight, overactive muscles. Now, based on that uh, hysterectomy, even though it has nothing to do with the muscles, it's not like uh, an abdominal tram. However, it can mimic it in the sense that it's shortened, you know, due to scar tissue or adhesion. So quite possibly doing abdominal stretches will be very beneficial uh, in different, different ways. So you could do a baby cobra. You could lie over a ball uh, or a BOSU. So abdominal stretches. All right, then we look at uh, the underactive muscles. And interestingly, we have anterior tibialis, gluteus maximus, and erector spinae. So I showed you the thing with the foot. So we can have you, you know, have a band and, and do, you know, like plantar dorsiflexion. So we're strengthening the anterior tibialis. So let's do uh, plantar dorsiflexion with band. And then uh, what are some exercises we could do to strengthen the gluteus maximus and the erector spinae? Quite frankly, baby cobra is gonna strengthen the erectors while it stretches the abdominal muscles. You know, when you're in that position, so boom, that's a great exercise. You're killing two birds with one stone. Uh, so I'm I'm going to put uh, baby cobra instead of abdominal stretch. The, that will be um, the abdominal. Which one on this book here, um, on page 25, which one did you check out? I'm Look at the middle one where it says from the side, excessive forward lean. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so baby cobra, like I said, is going to stretch the abdominal muscles and strengthen the erectors simultaneously, you know, start holding it 10 seconds and then see how you feel the next day. If that's fine, no pain, no strain, then do 15 seconds, 20 seconds, you know, work up to like 30 seconds of holding that. And you can also squeeze your glutes at the same time. So, you know, isometrically squeezing your glutes while you're doing baby cobra, we're getting all three of those things done. Now we, we know there's, there's other things. So if we have tight hip flexors and we want to strengthen the hip or stretch the hip flexors, 
by default, if we stre strengthen or shorten one muscle, what is going to automatically stretch the hip flexors? What's the opposing muscle to the hip flexors? Abdominals. Glutes. So uh, hip if flexors, I, glutes. Okay, so this is hip flexion, right? For yes. Some, for someone who has tight hip flexors, I don't necessarily want them doing this. I want them doing this. Glutes. Mm -hmm. what, am I, what am I saying, right? The opposing. Let's get mm -hmm. you doing some hip extension. Um, you can do this just, you know, in the kitchen, sliding your leg back, isometrically squeezing. Make sure you're standing on a soft knee on the other leg. Um, or I do this at the gym. I use a cable. I stand on uh, either a, a plate, a weight, or, uh, you know, Reebok step to just elevate my leg. But so I'm going to add hip extension. And then, you know, con that's going to contract your glutes. That's going to strengthen your glutes. And by default, because of uh, reciprocal inhibition, your hip flexors are going to stretch. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I always do that, grab my foot and just stretch my hip flexor. But we want to strengthen the glutes too. Okay. And, and you can do this with bands. You can buy, um, go on Amazon, buy a, what do they call it? A gym in a bag. It's like yellow, green, blue. Yeah, I get those red, great. blue and black bands. It comes with the handles, comes with a door attachment. And it also comes with an ankle strap. So you can, you can put the band around like the bottom of your bed or something. And then you've got some resistance. Um, you know, I, this is what I was doing all through COVID when we couldn't go to gyms and, and, and it's great. It, it all works very effectively. All right. So hip extension, I'm just going to say with band. All right. Um, and that right arm. Okay. Your arms went out to the side. So now let's look at, um, hold on a second. Arms fall forward, knee, 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 foot. Your arms did not fall forward. Yours went out to no. the side. And I don't know why that is not on here, knee, foot. But when the arms come out to the side, that is usually tight pecs, tight lats. So let's get you doing some door stretches, you know, just leaning, leaning through the door. And if you can do a child's pose, that will stretch your lats, you know, uh, sitting. And even if you can't get on the floor to do a child's pose, even doing something like this is going to be great for stretching the lats. Yeah. The only problem I have with that is my left knee. I have a... a medial meniscus tear. Yeah, that's why I'm saying you could do just yeah. what I just, just did and and stretch out on uh so we'll we'll call it a child's pose but we'll say on your desk or kitchen counter or something like that, okay? Okay. Um and then uh asymmetrical weight shift if you look at the very bottom you'll see overactive muscles, adductor complex, tensor fasci, a lot of piriformis, biceps femoris, gluteus medius on the opposite side. So that means you were shifting to the left. So that means your, your gluteus medius on the right side is overactive. So what I'm going to suggest on your, I've got to think this through, on your left side, we want to strengthen your gluteus medius. So one exercise that you can do, I'm going to try and do this without killing myself on this rolling chair. Let's <laughs> do, yeah. I know. Okay, here we go. Let's say you're on you're on a stair step, okay? So I'm standing uh -huh. on the right leg and you're going to drop down. Here, you need to see my hip more. Okay. Right. No, be careful. I know, I know. All right, so you're basically... You're going to lift your hip up and then you're going to drop down. You're going to lift your hip up. It's a hip hike and you're going to drop down. My foot is, my foot is flat, you know, flexed. 
So it's just this. And don't try this exercise at home. <laughs> but you're on, you know, a staircase or a fireplace mantle or something like that. So we are establishing that the right side is overactive. So we want to do the left side. So I want you to do those hip hikes standing on your right leg, hiking your left hip. Okay. So hip hike, standing on right leg. You know, and you do start off with five or six, seven or eight, whatever, whatever you can do comfortably. Really, really focus on that form and, and engaging that that glute medium. Okay. So if I'm inclined to the right, uh-huh, the one I have to work is the left side. Okay. And this is where it's it's almost like dyslexic. So okay. which uh, okay, so I mean let's in, let's say I'm inclined, my, my hip is inclined to the right. Yes. Yeah, so, so she, that means that one is is uh, I mean the 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 left one is the one that needs to be worked. Essentially, the side you're leaning to is the weaker side. Okay. Okay. So in her case, because she's leaning left, the right side is dominant. So now we need to strengthen the left side. All and this right. this is straight th this chart is straight out of the National Academy of Sports Medicine corrective exercise. I didn't make this up. I mean this is, you know, this is what they they use. So as far as the validity of it goes. Um now um so yeah, see it says under active muscles, the same side of the lean gluteus the same muscles. side Mm -hmm. and, and adductor complex. Will that so, be the same for scoliosis, Andrea? I Here's the thing. Scoliosis is anatomical. However, the muscles are going to adjust, you know, to compensate for the anatomical imbalance. So I, I would, here's the thing. You can try it. It might correct it. It might not, depending on how bad the scoliosis is. Do you know what I mean? Like, because we're dealing with a bone mouth, uh, malformation and we're not just talking about muscular, but because of the bone malformation, the, uh, you know, spine, the muscles are, are going to adapt differently. So yes, you may have over and under compensating muscles that it may not fix the scoliosis, but it can help balance everything out. If that makes sense. Help with a lot of pain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it's muscle related, for sure. For sure. I mean, I remember back in God, junior high, I had this good friend and she had one of those like metal cages that she had to wear, you know, to out her spine back in the day. So I don't know what they do. They do these days, but I haven't seen anything like that. So um, also your uh, right adductors are overactive your left adductors are underactive now it's very hard to unilaterally work your adductors however you could do it isometrically so you can use your own hand and i would do left adduction and then on the right side i would stretch it okay so left side you're doing adduction Right side, you're you're actually doing abduction in order to stretch the adductors. So we're going to do left manual ADD action and right. Um, let's just say I, I call it a butterfly stretch. Yeah. So that's like your piriformis, right? Yeah, I mean that's that's going to be part of it for sure. I could definitely actually your, your 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 piriformis when you're doing the butterfly is shortened uh because that's posterior. So if I bring if I do this, now I'm stretching my piriformis. If I do this, I, yeah. I'm I'm shortening it. Um, but the piriformis isn't let's see, over overactive muscles, piriformis. And it's so confusing because we're looking at just one side. But, you know, you can, if you feel like your piriformis is, you, it both can exist. It can be weak and it can be tight. So you can stretch the piriformis if you're feeling like, you know, it, it's, and, and especially if you are externally rotated, which we did not see with you. If you're externally rotated in the hip, 
oftentimes, like if you think about the piriformis, if this shortens, it's going to pull someone into external rotation. Mm. Okay. It's, it's so it's so cool because it's really this is this is putting the science back into exercise really you know we're not just randomly picking exercises there there is a method to the madness well this is right. still that same lphc with the asymmetrical weight shift yes indeed wow okay um and, and so think about this you know these are all these like little little modifications but and and I, i'd love to hear from you in two or three months and see how you're feeling how you're moving because believe me i probably need to do this with myself you know we tend we i'm speaking for myself but i like to see things you know i, I want to see my muscles so i love lifting weights you know and and you go in and you do things at the gym and this stuff is boring let's face it you know, it's not something that you're going to like really see results. So you're looking at the difference between what you can see and what you can't see. And, and being very aesthetically aware, I tend to do the things that I can see and overlook the things that I can't like stretching and corrective exercises. And that's why as we get older, and this, this accumulates, why we're so dysfunctional in our movement patterns and, and pain. Um, so I think, I think you're going to feel wonderful as you, as you do, like, these are all little in, individually they're they seem insignificant, but when you put it all together. But I think that this is going to be good because it's a whole stretching routine. And to me, that's one of my goals is to get into a stretching routine. So are you going to give like a whole paper that says all this stuff? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to type it and, uh and send it out to everybody. Oh, that's the bomb. Yeah, yeah. And then if you're like, wait, what's a butterfly stretch? I don't remember. Just just ask me. But uh, yeah. Um so we're we're almost done with this. Um so then the last thing which may be one of the most important things is your balance. So you said you were slightly balanced challenged. So we oh, want yeah. we want to choose balance exercises. Now you're you're a, a healthy, vibrant, fit person. You're not uh, an 85 year old, you know, debilitated person who's walking around with a cane, right? But we still don't know what you can and cannot do. So we want to start with a balanced progression. And just like I stood on the chair like an idiot, uh, this this is going to be a safer version. So. I'm starting off, I'm, I'm leaning against the wall and, and you don't necessarily have to do this, Tracy, but let's say we're dealing with somebody who's really frail. I'm not even going to have them do this. I'm going to have them do this like a kickstand. Okay. Right. So yes. think about, think about this when you're, when you're standing on both feet, let's say you have four contact points. You've got two heels and two sets of toes. Okay. So by eliminating one contact point by, by going up on my toes or by on my heel, now I've got a little balance challenge because I've eliminated a contact point. Lifting my foot entirely off the floor is going to be, for my, my purposes here, eliminating two contact points. So for somebody who's very frail, just start with the one. In your case, I'm going to say, all right, let's have you, let's have you lift your leg up you know, to 90 degrees. Now, if you're doing this and, and you're all over the place and, and you're, you're wonky, the last thing I'm going to do is put you on uh, balance discs, right? You can't even do <laughs> that on the floor. And then of course, you know, we do that on both sides because one side is probably going to be better than the other. Now I'm holding onto the wall. Next, we would do it without holding onto the wall. So that would be, that would be the next step in the progression. And then if you find somebody's really struggling with that, then you go back to holding onto the wall. If it's super easy for them, now maybe we go to a BOSU balance trainer or we go to balances. But actually, even before those, I would use an Airx pad, you know, like the big sponge, which has just a little bit. Oh, those are hard. Hand. Yes, but not as hard as a balance disc or a BOSU. And the problem with the balance yeah. disc and the BOSU is if people don't blow them up the right amount, they're either too squishy or too firm. So at least with the Airx pads, more of a sponge. So you have more consistency there. 
So I'm going to suggest you Google or get on Amazon and get yourself an AirX pad because I think that's where you need to be. Uh, and then and then do. I mean, I, I used to work with um, this balance with three poses in all the levels. Now, the sound is messing up. You guys are, yeah, can, can you hear me now? For Tracy, can you hear me? All right. Can you guys hear me? I think it's better now. Okay. Can you I hear was me? saying, Andrea, will it be correct? Yes. I just work the balance with the three poses in, the, in all the levels, depending on what each person can do. Holding a, a wall, a chair. Maybe we should uh, disconnect and then connect again. We have to thank the internet. Whatever problem arises, it's okay Thank because imagine the fortune that we can be together. I know. Are Are you guys getting along with the sound? Yes, we listen yeah, to you right now. It, yeah. Ah, now no, it's okay. Just me and you now. So maybe she logged off and she's coming back. Yes, yes, I imagine so. Did you paint that painting behind you? No, you know, I'm staying at uh, Santa Marta. Oh, Santa yeah. Marta is, a, is a city uh, by the seashore. And I'm coming here to work each ha month and a half, 10 days or so. Nice. Okay, we're back. I don't know okay. what happened. Yes. Um, so, Lucia, I was asking, Andrea, I was asking if, if for balance, it will be okay. I, I used to work uh, three poses in all the levels possible, according to the physical of each person holding a, a wall five, or a chair, five fingers, four fingers, three fingers, <laughs> till they leave the wall or the chair. Would that be okay? Uh, you're frozen again, Andrea. Yes. I don't see why not personally, but I'm not an expert at this. Yeah, Penny, again, is that? Yes, yeah, here it's we telling are. me my internet connection is unstable. Um, don't worry. So, so yeah, all, all you know, I mean, yoga in and of itself, you're, you're working on balance. There are all different ways you can do this. Um, but I'm just talking about, you know, somebody has nothing. They don't, you know, we're doing this at home. What can we do? Um, and, and balance is a big issue because, you know, you're at a higher risk for osteoporosis. Um, right. You, you are doing strength training, so that's good. But the balance is the other component because we want to keep you from falling. And then if you do fall, you know, you want to have strong bones and uh, less likely to injure yourself. Now, just in, uh, in finishing this up, looking at, at your exercises that you're currently doing. Uh, the only thing that I see, so you leg curls, let's see, you got, um, I, okay, so, hold on. Okay, you did not have excessively uh, round, rounded shoulders, which was good. Okay, so so chest press is fine. Uh, leg press, lat pull, shoulder press. Really, there's no contraindications with anything you're doing. I might, might advise you to rethink the abs just for right now while we're working on these muscle imbalances. Um, when you say you're doing abs, what, what have you been doing? Crunches? No, so what I do is there's this machine you can lay down on and, oh, and um, you, like a reverse. This? I don't do that. I don't do that part. Okay. I just do the reverse part like this. 
Okay. 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 So that, that'll probably be fine. How, however, however, that is shortening your hip flexors. All right. You're frozen. So, 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 Okay. Um, the tip. Uh, give a ball. Can you guys hear me? We're not. You're not really coming through. Ah, there she goes again. Here we are. Yeah, we, we can, can hear you. You're muted. You. <laughs> I think we need to just end it for today. You know, you know what we can do if, if we take off our image, the the internet. Oh, maybe uh, just the voice. Oh. All right, stop video. Andrea, you're muted. Ah, okay. Now can you hear me? A little uh, bit. A little better. You know, we decided to take off our images because in that way the internet improves a bit. I can see. Oh god. There we go. I, yeah, I think it's it's the internet. I don't know why, but yes, it, it works like that. We just take off our images and we can listen and hear you. Okay, here. All right, let's try that. Okay, so anyway, just, just to finish it up, um, I would do some hip flexor stretches. Um, no, but show us your image. Show us your image because we need to see you. Oh, yeah, okay, yes. okay, okay. Just Tracy and me. Okay, okay cool. that's fine. Um, <laughs> like in a, in a normal lunge, like what you think about doing a lunge, you're, you're like this, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, what you want to do is instead of this, bring this leg in, contract, contract the glute. So see how my leg is now more perpendicular? as opposed to back, yeah. contract your glute and push forward. You're gonna be you know, doing that hip flexor stretch and strengthening your glute at the same time. So do try and do that um, after you do your, your abdominal things. I think that'll be helpful. So to, to put a bow on this, I, I'm going to write this all up and and email this to everybody uh, in a way that is hopefully understandable. And then Tracy, of course, if you have any questions, just let me know because it's most important that you know how to do your workout. But uh, for everybody, the majority of people who are watching this as a recording, at, at this point, um, you should understand how we got here. You know, we we took the medical history, we we looked at cancer related and and other you know injuries surgeries what have you then we added treatment then we added the risk for lymphedema and then we took the assessment and we put all those pieces together which is what all these scribbly papers are and came up with the workout that we came up with today so if anybody does not understand how we got from point a to point z please reach out to me because that is, that is critical where, you know, you need to be able to do that to make this work. So are you ladies still with me or are you gone? We are. Yeah, we are. Oh, okay. 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 So any, <laughs> any, any questions? Yes, Andrea, I have a question in the assessment when, um, I mean, I had difficulty finding even in myself, I have not done it before in patients, but finding the, the iliac crest in front and what what should you look for behind? Is it the iliac crest still behind? Uh, or yeah. I tried to follow the, the inclination of my pant and I saw okay. that the pant was falling forward. Okay, so I'm going to bear all here. You see my lovely tattoos. All right. I wish I had your stomach. 
Uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't do any abs. Uh, I just got to get rid of some fat. Yeah. It's, I mean, snowboarding is a lot of, a lot of this anyway. So trying not to go too far down here. here yes, that's the Yes. Yeah. So, I find that one easy. No, no, no. That's ASIS. That is anterior superior iliac spine. This okay. is the iliac crest. Ah, okay, okay. That is your iliac crest, like the oh. horse. Okay. Yes. So yes. Just dig in there, and they should be able to like literally put you know put your thumb on top of the bone. Mm -hmm. okay, here, <laughs> like you can hear it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that's the ASIS. S A S, you call it? It's anterior superior iliac spine, A S I S. And then this, okay. this is your P S I S. P S I S, posterior. Yes. Okay. Why don't you Google it and ask for images? Yeah. And it's, let's face it, you know, if you're dealing with somebody who's got a lot of extra padding, they're not going to find it. Um, you know, you, if you're there in person, I mean, believe me, I've had people where I'm like, you know, and I just guess. Um, and so use, using their waistband, it's not a scientific, but, but oftentimes you can, you can at least see, you know, if somebody's got, got a big dip, uh, then, then you can see that particularly the anterior pelvic tilt, but look, there's only so much we can do with, with our eyes and with our hands and, you just do the best you can. And the bottom line, the, the thing about what we're doing is it's non-invasive. Um, you know, we're stretching, we're strengthening. If we do, we do it methodically and we gradually add repetitions, we gradually add more resistance, you know, frequency, intensity, duration, very little chance of somebody getting hurt. And the worst thing that happens is it's not effective and we try something else. Okay. But it's not like surgery. We're not doing physical manipulation. So, you know what I mean? So it's like, we're kind of now, if you're a physical therapist or, you know, uh, uh, an osteopath or whatever, and, and you're doing hands-on, you're a chiropractor, that's different because you, you, there are mm -hmm. people who are going through this course who, who are, and then they're, they're going to have different modalities. But for those of us who are simply fitness professionals, it's basically a hands-off approach, which okay. of course is drastically reducing the risk of of injury makes sense yes sure of course now that you've seen all my years of uh tattoo history that i would love to get rid of but hey you know nobody listens right uh, what are you gonna do so is, there, is there um because i haven't really gone through the books um but is there like one form that we would use to make an assessment yeah. And to be able to check off block, yeah. block, block. I mean, module. I did. Uh, okay. All of these are in the back of module four, and they are in your teachable. After module four, you'll see a section that says forms. And they're okay. also in the Facebook group. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. You did a really good job with these books i mean and all the pictures and everything oh, it's pretty you. amazing it it was a labor of love and now i've got it to do a lot of work oh, yes we can see that we can see it oh thank you all right so How did you do this? um dang let, let me let me show you this first so under files you've got all kinds of stuff in here um okay and so, so this is the Facebook group, but then you've got the forms also in module four and the answer to how I did this, God only knows. I mean, this started, a lot of work. started in, uh, the first edition was in 2001 or two, and Ooh. it was just breast cancer. It's about 40 pages spiral bound. And then as you can see, there's 13 editions of it. And it's every two years, I 
go through. I, I mean, this this last one was huge because we redid all the formatting, the pictures. Then you've got you've got to go through and 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 uh, edit it. I, I, it. It's an absolute nightmare. So now I've got to go into the 14th edition and do updates. And uh, I, I I was hoping to have it done by now, but I've got to I've got to get done with school, which will be done in two weeks, and then I'll start working on on updates. But yeah, it's a, it's a lot. Maybe of work. we can open Tracy. <laughs> yeah. If you uh I like Oh god, you're breaking up again now. Uh, I said I like doing stuff like that. Okay. If you need help. Yeah, yeah. Because um, yeah. I'm a geek like that. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you know. I could definitely 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 use help. Um so here I'm going to stop the recording. So um how do i turn this bugger off okay my haircut today i don't